Hello everyone and welcome to Keith's Crappy Consoles, where we'll be searching through the masses of Pongs, plug and plays and pop stations to see if any of them have games actually worth playing. Today's console is one I mentioned in my favorite... Aw, uh, the lighting is back, why is it stuffed up? No. Yeah, what I was about to say there, before I forgot to do another take once the lighting got better, is that the plug and play we'll be looking at today featured in my My Favorite Controllers Vader of 2016. It's the TV G Max Active Power Video Game System. So the basics. It's an S on a chip system with original licensed games and two common models with 30 and 75 games respectively. I have the 30 game version here. Power is provided from three AA batteries stored beneath an impressively robust battery cover with both a metal thread and sprung washer screw. On top is the power switch and a fixed cable that carries composite video and stereo sound, and it's impressively long. Now on to control and aesthetics, and where to start? At the bottom is a sprung steering wheel with about 45 degrees of travel either way. The thing that looks like an analog stick is actually just a four-way digital joystick with some actually rather nice plastic texturing on the top for grip. In practice it works as a second D-pad and this is where the Frankenstein-esque construction of this plug and play really starts to emerge. The D-pad and face buttons are ripped straight off an old Xbox Duke controller and the start and reset buttons are from a DualShock. So that's both Microsoft and Sony in this one little unit. But some eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed what the chassis is actually ripped off. That's right, it's actually based on the Nintendo IQ system, which is basically a legitimate N64 plug-and-play for the Chinese market with downloadable games. If you've never heard of it before, there's a link to a very good video on it in the description. It's actually quite an interesting story. So it was this insane mash of controllers which initially drew me to the G-Max. And for a dollar at a flea market, I couldn't really refuse. In-hand appraisal's pretty good. There's some nice grooves at the bottom for ergonomics. Buttons are quite springy. D-pad's pretty good, and even the contact joystick is okay. But as usual, a plug-and-play is only as good as how well it plugs. Seems alright. Mmm, plays. So let's take a look at the plays. Uh, games. Powering up, we see a fighter jet that's about to crash into a race car before their burning wrecks tumble down a cliff into the ocean below. And then we press the start button to see the menu. Is that a dead child lying in a field of gore? I'm, 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 sure, I'm sure that's good for kids. Yeah, no problem. Let's just go. Let, first game, first game, okay, first game. <sighs> Run a car. You control a car dodging other cars and roadblocks, collecting fuel for points before the time runs out. You'd think the wheel would be a perfect fit for this, but in all the games, it ends up just slowing your movements down, especially considering that it's not analog. Eventually, the levels get more interesting and the straightaway turns into corners, but you can't turn or slide quickly enough to actually navigate them. When your game was done better on the PC50X, you know you've done goofed. Okay, next game and OH MY GOD THEY DRILLED A HANDLE INTO THE DEAD CHILD'S HEAD TO CYCLE THE GAMES, WHAT IS THIS?! Hi guys, sorry about that, I just had to go into a quick stress-induced coma. To prevent causing any more distress, we will be covering the desecrated corpse of the rice ball headed child with an image from this, the green label 25,000 clip art volume 1. It's royalty free so I won't get in any copyright trouble. I mean the sun has a mohawk, what could go wrong? Motor Rally. You race motorbikes and come to a dead stop anytime you hit anything, which happens a lot, on a time limit, and the other racers are just obstacles. Yeah, Super Hang On, this isn't. Hell, PC 50X, this isn't. The dead stops nullify any feeling of weight or fun. Ocean Quest. Wow. What a high octane race. Press X to not die, more like hold X to win. Last Cabra. Okay, vertical shoot him up. It's got power ups, a boss. All your standard fare. You play as a blue jet against, um, birds and biplanes. It's a little one sided, 
But while it starts off fun, you realize that the birds and biplanes have a bit of an advantage because they can teleport and spawn on top of you. Also, you move around way too fast. Nope. Arrow Engine. Horizontal Space Shooter. The enemies come at you really slowly, so you hold down Turbo X and then win for a bit until the boss suddenly pops up. Jesus, it's packing heat! So yeah, a, a pretty competent boss pattern, but after this it's just the same thing repeated every level. And one okay boss does not a shooter make. Insect Chase. You guide this insect net which has a lot of stiff momentum to try and catch bugs, but apparently some bugs are the wrong bugs and I got a game over. The worst part about this is the momentum on the net when you move it anywhere just makes it feel like you're constantly fighting the controls, and any successful capture was just blind chance. Also, did that bug just become a plant? Oh, I don't even know with this one. Pinball Track. You get a ball to the end of the track. Sometimes it falls down holes, sometimes it doesn't. It's up to the whim of the gods, it appears. Birdie Nest. Okay, this one's actually pretty interesting. A bird flies along the top of the screen and you need to catch the eggs while avoiding the poo. Simple enough, but your hand and the bird are connected by this fixed length line. So if you move further from where the bird moves, then the bird drops and if it hits the bottom, you lose. This is actually quite fun in a physics puzzle kind of way, and with a little less hardware restriction, I think it could be fleshed out quite nicely. This one kept me playing the longest. I've got no idea if it was ripped off from anything. If you know, then please tell me in the comments. But yeah, it's a good game. Gold Star. A+. A-. Maybe a solid B. Bingo Zap, you move the ball to the hole with the sparkle in it. Next. Spin Ball, you guide a minecart to the end of a course and collect keys and pickups along the way. And actually has some pretty smooth acceleration. That feels nice. Until you get to a corner. Instead of smoothly swinging around it, you just stop dead until you press a different direction. You think this loop is for gaining momentum? Nope. Like Aladdin's missiles, it's pointless. To be honest, the game would be okay if it wasn't for this problem, which just kills it for me. Okay, so that's 10 down so far. It might seem like I'm not being as technical with these reviews as I normally am, but uh, that would take way too long, so that's why I'm trying to get through these quickly. Although you could say, in my defense, that I'm putting as much effort into these reviews as the developers put into the games. Star Alley, another vertical shooter with the same problems and some of the same graphics as Last Cabra. It's too fast and too easy to crash into stuff. At least the enemies don't spawn in the middle of the screen this time, and there's a cute starting animation. The most baffling thing though is the top score system. After you die, you're asked to enter your initials for the high scoreboard, but as soon as you do, the game just crashes back to the main menu and they aren't saved so you can see them again. While some other games do have high scoreboards, this is the only game to have this problem. Valiant Rescue, vertical shooter, and one of the first to use the square button for this bomb weapon that I can't get to hit anything no matter how hard I try. Again, you move much too fast for the amount of enemies on the screen, although not quite as bad as the previous ones. I actually wanted to beat this one, and um... Wait a minute, something seems similar about the graphics. But hey, at least they did do something original with them, as they redrew the basic Contra Level 1 aesthetic as a far away for the game's splash screen. Zero Tiger, same music and power-ups as Valiant Rescue, but this time there's so many enemies on the screen that are so fast that you almost can't avoid them. Zero out of Tiger. Bolt Fighter. This one has the opposite problem of the previous shooters, in that it is far too slow. Enemies slowly come at you one at a time, it's just so easy. And then the boss is one, and then two strafing helicopters. I guess it's okay if you're young and you've never played a shooter before, but you'd be better off with something like Gallagher or Space Invaders. Dragonfire. With a name like that, this had better have Sylvester McCoy hanging down from an ice cliff by his umbrella. It's Snake, but with walls instead of looping edges. I played this on my goddamn Nokia. 
Really, this earns the name Dragonfire. Next, Excel Racing. Uh, what is this? I mean, there's cars and, and flags and oh, now that now that now they're chasing me and I might be a squirrel. No. Bump car. Okay, there's three players to choose from with no difference between them except that it changes who you stare at the back of as you play. You drive down a broken highway, slowing down in between sections of crumbling road, collecting fuel, and it just kind of keeps going while the timer ticks down. It's slow and there's way too much stuff to crash into. Yeah, you don't want to play this one. Move fun. Woo, animated menus. I'll choose flowers. It's Candy Crush. Move fun? Moving along! GP Race. It's run a car again, but faster, on a bike, and with more stuff to crash into, and a little crash animation when you do. Next. Space Castle. So it's Space Invaders, but with some of the defeated enemies turning into power-ups that you can shoot, like, say, a clock that freezes time. This idea seems very interesting and really shakes up and furthers the Space Invaders formula, and that's coming from a guy who likes his Space Invaders. But there is a fatal flaw, and that's the shields. You probably didn't realize, but these mushroom houses at the bottom, they're the shields. The difference from Space Invaders being that you can't shoot through them. In fact, you can't fire at all while you're behind them. Which leads to a lot of confusion because it looks like they should be in the background. I didn't even notice them when recording this footage or writing the first draft of this script. Because you can't pay attention to them with your peripheral vision like in Space Invaders, you need to be looking at your ship instead of the enemies, and you can't aim like that. It's a shame, this one showed so much promise. Okay, last ten, let's do this! Ultra Doggy! Oh, this'll be good. That's, that, that's it right there, that, that's the first thing. It's the first thing I wrote down immediately. This came on the screen, I wrote down, this'll be good. I mean, look at this splash screen, I wanna put that on my wall! And it's just Frogger. Very slow Frogger. Ultra Doggy appears to be just as big as in the splash, and his hitbox is annoyingly bigger, making the game harder than it needs to be. Okay, I've made it to the end, and... Uh, I need a key? Okay, fine, I'll go back and get it, and... Uh. You let me down, Ultra Doggy! You let me down! Elfland, paint yourself the same color as the enemies to destroy them on different height levels. I feel like this would be pretty good if the controls were just a little better. It gets a pass. Jewel Master, it's Columns. Sea War, drop bombs on submarines that all go the same speed as you, so it's impossible to catch up to them. Not too fun. Catch the Egg, this game is a joke. You're supposed to try and catch the eggs and avoid the bombs, but the pan you catch them in moves so quickly and actually bounces off the edge of the screen, and it feels like it's sliding all over the place. The controls literally feel like a joke game, where they are supposed to be terrible, like Surgeon Simulator, and it's awful. Look, even the game's birds are in agony. Dart Champion. The title's a little confusing, but it's actually just skeet shooting. Like the NES version that was Game B on Duck Hunt. No problems here, it's as fun as it's always been. Maybe the green background makes things a little hard to see, but I'm just nitpicking now. Paint Master. It's like Pac-Man, but you paint. It's bad. Avoid it. Fish Catcher. I must say that this one has some impressive water animations right out the gate, but that's the only good looking thing about this one. You use this extendo hand thing to catch fish, but don't catch the bombs flying out of the ocean or you'll get your hand blown off. The controls are a little awkward though and the hands animation just make me dizzy. Smart Escape. Okay, this is probably the biggest game on the G-Max, but I can't really work it out. You're a penguin and you walk around and you collect things, but sometimes you can't collect them and you can shoot bubbles, but they don't really seem to do anything. I just don't get it. Maybe it's alright, but I just feel like it would take me far too long to learn how to use it. And finally, we come to our last game... Wisson! Or maybe Wison, Or... Uh, let's just say Wisson. And there's a lot of levels to choose from. I'll go with 13, because I'm feeling lucky. And it's one of those shape puzzle games. I won't go further on it, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just fill the square with the shapes. All in all, a decent puzzle game, if one that's a bit old. Just a quick little unscripted extra before we wrap up. While I was making this video, I walked into a local loan office, and I saw this sitting on the shelf. 
the dual screen car solution with game, which appears to have a plug and play which is exactly the same as this one. I mean, not exactly, they ditched the IQ shell, but if you look at the buttons, it's got the same sort of Xbox face buttons, the same steering wheel, the same D-pad, same stick, and if we look on the screen there, we see a screenshot of one of the exact same games. So. I'm pretty sure that this reuses the exact same games, and there's a little thing in the corner there that says it has 30 of them. Comes with these two screens, um, unfortunately I couldn't pick it up because they wanted a bit over I think a hundred bucks for it. Yeah, I just wasn't going to bother with that price. But interestingly, this package was put together by NEC, which is a bit funny because they were the guys who built the TurboGrafx-16. So now we're in a situation where the company that made the TurboGrafx-16 is now making NES on a chip plug and plays, which that just tickled me. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get too good footage of it because uh, I just had my camera phone at the time. So uh, these are the best screenshots I could get out of that. Anyway, I just found that a bit interesting. So the TV G Max was not the only system to have uh, these games. No idea if the splash screen is the same though. Okay, I've rabbited on for all long enough. That is all. And with that over, let's change my shirt back. And that's the TV G Max. All in all, it wasn't that bad with two good action games, Birdie's Nest and Dart Champion, and three good puzzle games in Jewel Master, Move Fun, and Wyson. So, all in all, I think the first episode of Keith's Crappy Consoles has found something pretty alright. But believe me. Worse is to come. Hi everyone, thanks for watching my little review of uh, the TV G Max Active Power Game System. Uh, this has been the first video in a new series that I'm going to be starting called Keith's Crappy Consoles, where as I said in the intro, we'll be looking at uh, pop stations, plug and plays, and all those kind of dinky little consoles you can get and see if any of them actually have games worth playing because some of them do uh, but yeah so yeah I hope you enjoyed the video um, I'm recording this at uh, a little bit past midnight uh, did a bit of an all-nighter try and get this one finished and it finally is and I'm happy about that um, so yeah if you like that there's some more videos there uh, yeah, so anyway, as I said sorry I'm just tired but uh, as I said, thanks for watching, and uh, as a little present for staying around this long, uh, I'll have some bloopers for you in just a second. So I uh, hope you guys are enjoying Season 1, and I hope to see you soon. Bye. Okay, that's 10 down at least. It may seem like I'm not being as technical with these reviews as I knew... So I've just realized after looking through my DVD footage that the footage I shot of all these games a couple of days ago did not record properly. So we've got to do all of those all over again. The things I do for you. Hello and welcome. Ah, oh, frig, I'm still good with Jim playing in the background. This is the lighting I have to deal with. This, this is what I have to make work. I'm waiting for clouds. Mmm, plays. So let's take a look at the plays. Uh, games. No? I'm calling them plays. Okay. This had better have Sylvester McCoy hanging down from an ice... Uh, you can see that there's nothing on the TV there, can't you? It's all fake! And with that over... Let's change my shirt back.